It's images such as these that grain growers hope won't be repeated in spring. Mice have been active in Queensland's Maranoa to South Australia's Eyre Peninsula, but southeastern Australia has been putting up with mice in plague proportions for successive years. The issue seems to be that they're becoming more common uh, and that they are causing more damage when they do occur. And that's primarily down to changes in farming practice. Reduced livestock numbers, retained stubble, no till and a wet summer gave the mice plenty of cover and feed and with stories of growers finding semi-permanent mouse warrens, the risk is that mice will still be here when crops reach the critical flowering and seed set stage. Just having got a good crop establishment doesn't mean you're out of the woods, um, but it means that uh, you've got a, a period to keep an eye on your crops during that flowering stage. The economic impact can be very serious and last year mice caused an estimated $30 million worth of damage in terms of lost crops in South Australia. The plague in 2011 is far more widespread than that. Um, it was very severe where it occurred on Air Peninsula last year, but uh, the potential losses are enormous. Growers should already be looking for signs of mouse damage to developing crops. In cereals, that can be to the tillers. The mice will start to chew through the sides of developing tillers to get at the growing point. It's not easy to detect because it can look like it's just a disease problem or uh, moisture stress in some cases. Uh, but if you see large patches starting to open up in your, in your crops uh, around old mouse holes, you know that that's probably the cause. And later, when wheat and canola are flowering, there are more signs to watch out for. Mice will climb up the plants to get at the developing heads. Uh, they'll chew cereals off at the top node and just drop the head over. And they'll uh, chew off uh, canola flowers and, and the developing pods. And so you need to, to watch out for damage on the green pods uh, on the plant uh, and for any evidence that they're, they're dropping pods or seeds um, onto the ground. Where mice populations are persistent, the only means growers have to minimise damage to their maturing crops this spring is to lay bait. There are registered baits which are available uh, and they're effective in crops uh, at, at virtually all stages um, and can be applied on maturing crops uh, around flowering and uh, certainly in past experience have been very effective at, at preventing problems at that time. Longer term, the challenge for Australian grain growers, as Greg Mitzi sees it, will be to retain the benefits of minimum till cropping without providing an environment for permanent mouse problems in crops. I'm not quite sure what those answers are going to be, but I think the Australian farmers are a, a pretty good innovative lot and they'll work it out. Um, the owner of the, the land we're on now said to me just yesterday that, that he thinks in 10 years time uh, we'll be looking around and, and looking at any farm that has persistent mouse problems and saying, well, he's not doing something right, uh, that, that they will work it out. Uh, so we have to wait and see. Grain growers should look to GRDC's website for more information and make use of its mouse management fact sheet.